This is Damon Stevens with Finwell Fillers. Today is Sunday, November 6, 2022, and this is our Sunday prep for the week. So hopefully you, everybody profited on Friday. Uh, there was opportunity on the downside and upside. So regardless, if you traded both or just one of them, hopefully you were able to profit uh, from the market because it is definitely volatile out there. So let's get into uh, the stocks and the charts and see what we can look for for this week coming up. All right, just let's recap before we do that. Uh, looking at the Dow Jones, it closed up 1.26%, NASDAQ up 1.28%, and S&P 500 up 1.36%. And you can see on the charts here what a right it was. We opened up lower and found a peak, pulled back down, went flat for the day, and then rallied at the end of the day. And that was pretty much across the board. So there's opportunities regardless kind of what area you were in. You're looking at our overall tech stock. So the things are a little bit mixed. Uh, Apple is down slightly. Tesla definitely sold off. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of stuff going on in that, uh, that part of the industry right now. But overall, the rest of Microsoft did excellent. Google did excellent. Uh, a lot of these stocks have been beaten down, these tech stocks. Uh, and in, energy is a little bit mixed. But energy continues to, to uh, be the strong player, at least for now, uh, in the market. So... Uh, looking at our scanner here, nothing really hit the scanner to trade on the small caps or other ways. As you can see, volumes are pretty low, uh, but something to keep an eye on on uh, as we go through the day here. Looking at the market watch this week, looking at what's coming up. It's in consumer credit on Monday, not a whole lot. Uh, we do hear from uh, Tom Barkins on uh, inflation at 6 o'clock p.m. That will be after the market's closed anyway. Uh, elections day on Tuesday. So this is this is what the, where the play is, is election day is going to be important. Uh, you might see things a little volatile, but probably mostly flat up to elections day. Really, the outcome of elections is going to be really critical this week. Uh, if uh, this if the Republicans win, that'll create a gridlock in the according to the market, probably. And more likely, we're going to uh, see a positive reaction in the market if the Republicans win. Uh, if they don't, then obviously we might see some uh, downturn in the market. And I'm not uh, talking about politics here. I'm just talking about how the market is probably going to react because if it's gridlock, that means that uh, it's not easy to move things and that way things are a little more stable. Uh, if we do not get gridlock and we're really skewed on one side or the other, Republican or Democrat, uh, the market may see that as a higher risk uh, of one side or the other. So just be careful out there. Not sure which way it's going to move for sure. Uh, obviously, this is not financial advice. Just telling you, just be careful. We will probably see reaction. And you might see reaction in one way, one direction, and then all of a sudden it reversing go the other direction. So just be really careful out there. And then Wednesday, you know, we have the Fed speaking to us quite a bit. So uh, anything could go here. So just uh, be careful out there. So we get uh, Wednesday, we hear from the feds. Uh, Thursday, we get core CPI. That uh, could very well swing the market. Thursdays are just crazy days for uh, news, uh, as well as Friday. Uh, Friday. So, so a lot of feds speaking this week. That can create a lot of volatility. We got the uh, elections. That's going to create a lot of volatility. So just be careful trading out there. It's going to be a busy week this week. But hopefully you're all profitable out there. Uh, so let's get out there and kill it this week. Uh, looking at the you know S and P 500 stocks that are above the 50-day moving average, you can see that off this little bull run here that we we kind of peaked out here, kind of where we were before in the past, and then pulled back a little bit. But now we just rallied back up on Friday, and so you have over 50 you know percent of companies over the 50-day moving average, which is very bullish, um, or not as much as over the 200, but definitely not over the 50-day. Definitely bullish momentum. Uh, so just keep that in mind, even though we're kind of in a bear market. Uh, looking at the 2007-2008 crisis that we had go on, you see the market kind of pulled up, peaked, kind of bounced through the 20, through the 50 a little bit, and then finally fell to the two, the 100, and then down below to the 200. And we're looking at, uh, you know, right now, 2001-2002, same type of peak, come down, we broke the 20, we're, we kind of spiked the 50 a couple times, we're above it right now, uh, you can see we uh, went back up and was above it here. Uh, but as soon as it broke that 50, uh, boy, the set downside started accelerating. So just be aware of that as we're going into the next several months here that 
you know, if we don't break out of here very well, we could, if we do break this 50 day moving average and hold under here, uh, that very well we could see an acceleration. So hopefully we don't see that, but a very likely and, and, you know, a very possible. So just keep an eye on charts that, you know, look similar. Um, obviously conditions are different, but definitely gives you at least an idea of what to possibly plan for. Uh, and here's the challenge too, is infl in inflation rates are high. So we're still, you know, on this chart right now, we're 820. Typically, you're going to want to see, you know, inflation rates come down below the Fed funds rate, which is, you know, now going to be, you know, up to four and possibly they said five and a quarter, um, you know, by next year, by next March. And you can see here, that's kind of where we're at five and a quarter back here in 2007, 2008, uh, before the Fed rate broke down. And then uh, obviously, you know, you see inflation was never above five, six here. So we're definitely elevated way above where we were back even 2007, 2008 area. And, you know, they typically talk about the cycle about 18 months. So we definitely have uh, a ways to go. So just, uh, just be patient, be aware of it, and trade according to uh, to your plan. Also looking at, uh, you know, you see that institutions where the market continues to be extremely high, at least since, you know, 2000, this is record uh, shorts on the market. So something to be aware of that, you know, there's still downside that uh, you know, people are planning for. And, and so is investors. Uh, looking at here, you know, let me update this. Um, so let's update this for so next week. So this is call puts. And you can see a huge volume. This was almost like dead. There's like almost no calls or puts. And you can see right now, uh, it's, it's really mixed. Um, you can see a lot of buyers coming here. Look at this high peak here at 410. Uh, you have a lot of calls. That's almost 10,000 in the volume. Uh, but you can see also here 385. For puts, you have 378. A uh, huge mix here, but a lot of, uh, this is a lot of volume to come in. Uh, and you can see that the call put ratio is pretty close. I mean, 1.2. It was at one point, uh, puts was like very heavily, almost like two to one, three to one. Um, so you get a lot of, you know, obviously the market's thinking, you know, very mixed. And you can see that, you know, there's a lot of greed that started coming back in the market as the market started to accelerate on this last bull run. Uh, and obviously that's shown here. So where do we go from here? Hard to say. Max Payne would be 376 for the week. We'll see if that plays out. If you haven't subscribed, definitely subscribe to our channel, Then Wealth Live on YouTube. Uh, and there we will bring these videos to you so that you can see what, you know, what we're trading, what we're looking at. Um, as we go into this market. Uh, and if you're wanting more, we have a free non-member Discord and chat on our website, finwealthlive.com, as well as if you want to join our membership, we have a membership here of service of live trading, training courses, group training, and one-on-ones. So let's get in some charts here. So ExxonMobil, you can see ExxonMobil here, kind of at these highs still, right about this, this uh, third deviation, man. Kind of you see where we kind of peaked out here before and pulled back. Kind of sitting up there, we peaked out, pulled back, and then ran right back up again. So energy is still strong, still you know making record highs here. You know we'll see if we can get pumped back up here. You know one eighteen to one twenty probably would you know if we pop there quick, we probably get a quick pullback here. Uh, probably a huge reaction. So just watching that energy uh, right now. And uh, Netflix had to you know after hitting that uh, bull run here. Had a pullback here. You know, it didn't quite close all the gap up here. So 333, 32 is where we're kind of where we wanted to go. But we filled most of it. So uh very you know pleased with what you know Netflix was able to do and it's pulling down to fill this the open gap here that was open as well. So if we get a down day, Netflix may come down and go ahead and try to hit this and close this gap. If it does, you see this was strong support, a strong resistance. So now strong support off that 50 day. If we can hit that and close that gap, you know, maybe we can get a bounce off of here and move up uh, to the upside here. Apple pull back as well. Down here, it kind of tagged this low lot level here to you know, this 114 area and then bounce off. And so, I, you know, one of the things I'm seeing is these huge tail candles across the board, as you see, as we go through these charts. So is that reversals here? So we came back, check in, and now maybe the market's going to take off and run again. You know, at least maybe retrace maybe 50% of this move. Uh, and that's and that's typical to see that retracement or, or you know retest of these areas. So we'll see what happens. But Apple did big tail candle. So watching that for the open 
uh, as we come into this week here to see if we get a little bit of a pop and rally. Amazon will tail candle as well off of the low. So looking for it to pop up again, you know, above this, uh, you know, $93 area for a run. If not, you know, we could possibly down put new lows in. NVIDIA had this nice little bull run, pull down, pop back up. It's right here at the resistance level. Get above 142, and we can probably run to 150, 151. Tesla, you can see here just in this little channel here, back and forth. And we're down towards the bottom. You know, do we bounce here and run back up? You know, we kind of been are in this little range here between 233 and, you know, 20, 203, 204 area. So how long do we stay here? It's hard to say. But, you know, you can this is a wide enough range. You can probably trade this until we finally get a breakout on Tesla. Microsoft, down the lows again after having that little bull run pull back here. Hit a new low, bounced off. We'll see. we got to get, you know, really above, you know, this 221 area to kind of run again. Uh, Google, nice little tail candle here. We got above this candle, um, this low candle. So that's great. We need to stay above, stay above this $87 range and, and then hopefully it'll bounce up and move forward back up towards the 20 day. A uh, 10-year yield um, kind of flat right now, which is helpful for the market. If we get a run up here um, towards 4.30 again, uh, look for a possible pullback in the market. Same with the uh, two-year yield. Uh, kind of pull back here, sitting here flat on this high um, after the spike. But we've got a, this big, huge reversal tail can, uh, reversal candle here. So we could possibly pull back here if we did. There's a range down in this area. So looking either for you know a break you know below this uh, 460 level or break back above towards five. If we do, market's going to come down. Dollar, dollar right at the bottom of this candle. So you can see we got kind of this little wedge here. And we're towards the bottom here, right? Towards the 50 day. If we break the 50 day under 110.80, uh, look for, uh, you know, the gold to obviously, you know, have a little spike. But if we trail back up this candle this week, then gold and develop, and the market probably will come down a little bit. So just be aware of that. And gold, here you go. I hit that 50 day again uh, and uh, re rejected off a bit. We got to really get above this 1678 level and hold that to get up towards 1716 again. So uh, a little bit of resistance still here. So we'll see if we can uh, you know, make some movement here if the dollar continues to come down. VIX continue to sell off here. Told you that if we got below 25, it's going to be really helpful for the market to run. Uh, hopefully, you know, it can continue down here. There's is a little bit of support down here. Could bounce off this $24 level. Uh, if it breaks it, then that's even help, more helpful for the market. Maybe we get a run here with the campaigns. And the elections coming to a close. Um, but just be careful after the elections uh, for some volatility. SPY on one day. Nice big tail candle here. Looks like a reversal candle right here. So we'll see, you know, can we get, you know, from this 20, can we get, you know, above 380? You know, if we do, then, you know, we can make, maybe make a run to 390. Uh, but look for some quick movements here this week uh, with uh, the elections going on. Triple Qs, nice big tail candle up towards the upside. Got to get above 267, 268 uh, to make a run back to 280. IWM, tail candle. Really got to get above, you know, 380 to run or below 176 to, to fall down here. Uh, financials, tail candle as well. I'm stuck here right towards this 200 day moving average. So if we get above, you know, 30 34, we maybe make a run up to 34 and a half, 35. Uh, if we break back below uh, this little candle right next to it, right here at 33.64, then look for a downside on uh, the financials. Bitcoin, kind of in a wedge, finally broke, you know, this 100 day after a long period of consolidation, um, but rejected off it. Now we're back below it. So we got to see if we can get, you know, some dates above this to, to run. If not, this could break down or maybe even find itself, you know, stuck in a, the next channel. Seems like Bitcoin likes to do that. Kind of finds a level and then just kind of holds it for a while. And so I'll put some lines out here just so you can kind of get a visual of what we're looking at here, which is this little... This little channel right here and we were in this one down below now we might be in this little tight one up here so just something to be aware of and i'll leave that on there so we can look at it in the future ethereum same thing came up um got above the 100 day 
uh, but kind of struggling now. Uh, and so again, uh, Ethereum might be in the same boat here. You can see at the top of this candle here, might be kind of range bound uh, between the top and the bottom of this candle. You can kind of see that here. So this is kind of engulfing all this area right here. And actually this candle here has engulfed these candles. So we may be stuck in a range for now. So just something to be aware of with your cryptos. Um, that's our stocks, our crypto things we're looking at for this week. Definitely be safe uh, trading out there. I hope everybody has success. And again, you know, if you want to chat with others or, you know, get our daily watch list, definitely go check that out. Everybody have a great rest of the weekend. Have a safe trade this week and watch for that volatility. Everybody have a great night.